Hey everyone, um, you're watching Open Source Friday from GitHub. Um, my name is Rizelle Scarlett or Black Girl Bites, and I'm joined by Kadesha, uh, who's my co-host today, and also Matt. Um, I'll let them go ahead and introduce themselves if you're ready. Uh, Kadesha, want to go ahead and introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, sure. Hey everybody, my name is Kadesha or It's That Lady Dev. And I am new to GitHub, a uh, new developer advocate here. So, so happy to be here. Awesome. And I'm Matt Pocock. Uh, I am Matt Pocock UK on Twitter, on Twitch, on YouTube, etc. cetera. And uh, I'm also extremely excited to be here. I am, I'm a guest, right? I'm an intruder into GitHub's sacred space. So thank you for inviting me. <laughs> no, thank you for, for being here. And I'm so excited to see that like already 22 people are viewing um I would, i'd love to hear where y'all are call, calling in from just because i know people from all over the world are should, would be watching and i'm just curious um cool thank you for joining us matt when i saw um that you were like this typescript wizard on twitter and that <laughs> you had created a typescript translator i was like this is so cool i have to have um matt on because it's it's yeah. super useful like <laughs> i use this typescript cool. for yeah, yeah. Um, why don't you um, tell us a little bit about the TypeScript translator, and then we can go into a demo. Sure, sounds good. Um, well, my background is personally like I've been uh, fiddling around with TypeScript for about three years now. Uh, I worked at a company called Stately until a couple of weeks ago, and um, or in fact, until last Friday, actually. And what I did was um, at Stately, I worked on a library called XState, which is an open source library where you basically, it was a very, very complicated TypeScript library. And we did a uh, did a lot of sort of hardcore TypeScript stuff. And that put me in a position where I sort of seemed to be doing a lot of advanced sort of crazy wizardry with TypeScript or learning from a lot of people who were doing that. And I started posting tips on Twitter and um, I'm now like the TypeScript wizard, I guess, or the Rodney Mullen of TypeScript from Where's Boss or blah, blah, blah. And so it's it's been a crazy, crazy few months. And um, I've now finished at Stately in order to be, be a TypeScript wizard full time, I guess. I don't, sure it was. I don't know what the metaphor is. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm now releasing a TypeScript course. So you can have a look at totaltypescript.com, which is uh, it's going to be extremely cool. And I've got my first TypeScript workshop that I'm teaching next Friday. So if you want to kind of come along and join the TypeScript journey, um, I can see a few people in uh, in chat that I recognize from uh, from my Discord and from Twitter. So hello, folks. And the TS Error Translator came out because, or came came along because, I'm really frustrated with TypeScript. Like you know, you know when you have like a a brother or a sister that you love a lot and you're really really close to them, and you know, you spend maybe a bit too much time with them, and you think, okay, uh, yeah, that thing that you do that's really starting to annoy me now, and I. Like TypeScript is an incredible tool, and but the thing that it doesn't do well, it doesn't do error messages very well. It's kind of famous for it. Like, um, so Rizal, your background is like you've used TypeScript a bit, right? Yes, yeah, and I agree. One of the first time I saw like this is at any type or inferring there's at any type, I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, I used it a little bit. Yeah, sorry, a little bit there, Kadesh. No, I primarily used JavaScript. I've never had a reason to use TypeScript, so I've never used it, honestly. But mm -hmm. I have seen the um, grueling error messages, um, though they're not as bad as JavaScript, but still um, pretty pretty uninformative. Yeah, some of them are extremely hairy. Um, so yeah, the that's kind of where I the TypeScript error translator kind of came from, is I wanted a way to improve these error messages and uh, I did a bit of VS Code extension dev before, so I thought, okay, that's probably probably an idea here. So we could jump into the demo. TypeScript can just be really, really tough sometimes. And um, let's imagine that you have, um, I'll keep things relatively simple for now. This is a TypeScript file. I'm just inside a project here. This is kind of like where I do all my sort of playground stuff. So we just got a sort of pretty basic TypeScript config, got a package.json, and we got um, this little file here. And it's just saying hello world at the minute. And Kind of for the TypeScript fundamentals stuff, like I might cover a little bit of beginner TypeScript stuff in the stream if that's all right, if people are kind of into that. Um, there's like, um, so this the idea here is that you think of TypeScript and you think of type annotations, right? You think, okay, I need to like annotate everything and tell TypeScript exactly what all my stuff is. Here, like we're getting this, like, let me turn this into a let actually, we're getting this 
hello thing here. And it's if I hover over it, it's telling me that it's a string, which is kind of useful. If I change this to a number here, then it's going to tell me it's a number. Pretty nice. And as soon as I like add a type annotation here that's wrong, for instance, it's going to let me know type number is not assignable to type string. Now, if you're not using the TypeScript error translator, in fact, let me just uh, disable it for a second. Um, of course, a reload is required. How dare you even suggest that I can change my settings without a massive reload? Um, then here, what you would get is just this little thing below. Type number is not assignable to type string. But what the TS error translator does is it offers you a translation. It says, I was expecting a type matching A, but instead you passed B. Interesting. So that just puts it in a friendlier phrasing. And there's a few things to note here. I like TypeScript has like thousands of error messages, thousands and thousands of them. Um, we've covered like, I don't know, maybe 50 of the most common because the most common ones are the ones you're going to see most often, right? And we decided to do uh, things a little bit differently here. So here it phrases it in the first person. So it says, I was expecting a type matching A, but instead you pass B. That frames it so that TypeScript is kind of like a person that you're interacting with. I often think of TypeScript as kind of like a teacher. You know, they're kind of like a teacher. They've got the red pen and they're going to mark you wrong when you do bad stuff, you know? So yeah. this is like a mark against you. You know what I mean? You shouldn't be able to do this because we're saying this slot is a string, but you're, you're passing it this. Yeah. One of like, and so what you get here is you get, you still get the original stuff here, but you just get this little translation there. And we'll look at the full translation in a minute. So pretty cool, right? Very. I love I love that you made sure it was first person as well, because I, I often don't know what exactly it's referring to. I'm like, what yeah. type is not assignable? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Who knows what this means? There's one error that you get really, really often when you're working, especially when you're working in. Um, oh, God, where's where's it gone here? <gasps> get upstream. There it is. Um, there's an error that you get enormously often when you're working in TypeScript, especially if you just change over a file from JavaScript to TypeScript, which is if I say const uh, my func equals, let's say we've got a uh, subtract and we've got a and b here and we return a minus b. So this is all perfectly valid JavaScript. JavaScript isn't like a teacher. It's not going to tell us when we're going wrong. It's just going to uh, fail us when we put this into production probably, you know, but this here, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this whatsoever in JavaScript. But in TypeScript, TypeScript's a little bit harsher. If I turn this into a .ts file, I'm getting some red lines. The teacher isn't happy. Yeah. Why isn't the teacher happy? No type. Well, there's, like, there's no type there, right? So, But the error message you get is so cruel and wanton and mean. It's like parameter A implicitly has an any type. What? <laughs> what does this mean? Whereas <laughs> if you get the... If you get the translation, uh, Kadesha, does this make more sense than the one below? A lot more sense. Uh, it's like I can I can deduce what it means, but I'm just like, just tell me what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I don't know what type A is supposed to be, so I've defaulted it to any. Your TS config file says I should throw an error here. Okay, so if you see the full translation then, oh, of course it's thrown it up in the wrong window. Over we go. Um, so I'll stick it up here. Um, then you actually get a more detailed explanation here. So what we get is, this is one of my most commonly delivered er errors. You've likely declared a function, for instance, blah, 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 which is, I don't know what type A is supposed to be, so I've defaulted it to any. So you get this sort of extra stuff in here too, which is really nice. And what this means then is what we should be doing is adding number and number here. So it just gives you the chance to be um, a bit cleaner and like understand your code a lot more and get more out of it. So that's that's the whole idea of the extension, really. We cover a lot of different errors and we just show them kind of alongside the errors that you usually get. I love it. I love nice. it. And I didn't notice you had a front end for it as well. Like it looks like you have the, the VS code extension, but what you the page you just went to, you can like copy and paste snippets of code in there. Exactly. Yep. You, the kind of idea of it is that you can share it with people. So if you're going, oh my God, I don't know what this error is supposed to do. Then for instance, I can just sort of share it with Twitch chat. I can just say, you know, uh, let's have a look at this error together. And I have no idea why it's working. So I'll just post it in once I've accepted the chat rules. And it's oh, just, uh, it's just there. Nice. Nice. Oh my gosh. Really useful. 
<laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> so cool. And um, yeah. like it, it gets crazier, you know, like these are relatively simple time errors, but if you start doing something nuts, like imagine if we have like a, like let's say we have a const get users function, which like returns promise.resolve. Imagine that we have like uh, ID uh, is one and name is Rizal. And sorry, Kadesha, I can't be bothered to type out your name, but um, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine that we have like get users and we give this a type. So if we do this in a funny way, we'll say get users is a function that returns a promise with like, let's say we just have ID string and uh, name string here. And now if I try to assign this here, get users, ooh, our teacher's yelling at me. Oh God. Okay, this is a pretty big one. This is a huge error. Like if you look at all of this, the issue with TS errors is they stack. Mm. So it's like a stack trace in JavaScript, but the issue is that it's upside down. So the most important stuff is actually at the bottom. What oh, it's telling okay. us here is that ID name string and an array of those is missing the following properties from type ID name string, ID and name. That's because I declared this incorrectly. What I should have, this actually returns an array of users, but I've got it so it only returns a promise that contains a single user. So the way I would fix this is to go like this and it's done. But if I really like can't work that out, then I can go and see the full translation. And oh, for God's sake, it's gone over to the other window. <laughs> here it comes. Yeah, so here it is. And this one, I decided to show it actually in reverse order. So you get the bottom error first, and you get, in fact, it's, it's missing a translation here, missing the following properties from type. And this one, it's saying, OK, this is not assignable to type this, which gives you a, a better hint. Um, and then this is not assignable to type get users. So you get the stack trace sort of in the proper order. Hmm. Wow. I Okay. I also didn't know. I just learned that they're being shown in an upside down order. I always just right? read all the errors and I'm just like, okay, what is it telling me? Okay. Yeah. I think I understand that one. <laughs> you got to scroll to the bottom. It's such a stupid system. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of what it does. Tell us how you really feel, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a, uh, yeah, it's, it's a suboptimal, let's say. Um, but no, it's, it's, I mean, that, that's, kind of exactly how you print it. Like you've just. Oh no, you froze oh, again. No. I've got a train <laughs> to, to oh no. Oh, he's you. back. Oh no. I'm back. I'm back. Yes. Oh, that was crazy. Cause I actually heard you say, oh no, he's frozen again. I'm like, no, I haven't. I'm, like, I'm perfectly fine kids. <laughs> oh damn. But that, but that's the idea. You should always walk your errors down to the bottom so you can actually see what's going on. I love it. Okay. I have a question. It's like, irrelevant to the actual translation but more to how you made it so i've made a vs code mm. extension before but i i um the only way i was able to show messages was in like a little window at the bottom or a little mm. um post how did you get it within the <laughs> <laughs> yeah within the thing well let's yeah. let's let's dive in some code shall we let's go have a look mm -hmm. at it uh why don't we use uh so it's on github matt pocock ts error translator why don't we use GitHub's fabulous kind of like, um, what, what do you call this? Well, like when I press like full stop here. Code uh, GitHub.dev. Yeah, oh, GitHub.dev, code spaces. That's not code spaces. Oh. There's a, no, no, yeah. Code spaces, it hasn't been released yet to every single person. And it's oh. way cooler than this. It's like this, but on steroids. What? So set up dev containers and stuff. Like I've been using it and it's, it's cool. That's cool. <laughs> That's extremely cool. Yeah. This is this. I mean, I love, I love even this, which is just the ability to be able yeah. to open up a VS code editor and just like be able to ping PRs around. It just it's feels so amazing. Fast. It's, it's, it's so nice. Really well. I've got, um, so the way this is structured, um, I don't know how, can you guys see this? Okay. Oh, yeah. the size looking. Looks good to me. What about okay, you? Cool. Kadesha? It's a little tiny, but you know, I need to go to the eye doctor. <laughs> it's bouncing. All right. So we got our um, basically this is like a mono repo, and we've got our apps. Um, you've got two apps in here, which is one for the VS Code extension, and then one for the web. And the VS Code extension is the one you want to look at. We've got a source file in here, which of course is written in TypeScript, and we've got our extension in here. And so 
kind of what you were asking about was how do you like, like for those who've never seen a VS Code extension before, this will look pretty scary. But the main thing that's going on is that we've got two functions. We've got a function called activate. Wow, that's that's such a British reference. Like you, you guys probably wouldn't get that. That's like a Robot Wars reference. Shout out to any Robot Wars fans in the chat. Um, so there is activate and deactivate. And what this does is it's called whenever the um, whenever the VS Code extension starts, and this one is called when it stops. So it's a pretty simple setup, really. What I do then is I say whenever, OK, this is pretty hard to read. Bye, bye, bye. You can provide a VS Code hover provider, oh. which is when you hover over different bits of the code, it will um, it will work, basically, or it will give you some stuff. And what are we even doing here? Items in URI store, blah, 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 blah. And oh, yeah. And then the way this works then is we have this on did change diagnostics. So when TypeScript gives you information about your code, when your teacher marks your code for you, it yeah. gives you like this array of messages about your code. And what we do is we take those diagnostics, we humanize them, and then we store them in a store. So when the user hovers over the correct bit of code, they see the TypeScript translator. Wow, thank you. And this made me realize I didn't, um, dig further enough into VS Code's API. You're a wonderful teacher. I learned a lot, like in just these. I think it's only been about like 10, 15 10, minutes. 15 minutes yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, so oh. I was I was a singing teacher and like a voice coach for a long time before I was a. Um, so I've been a teacher for a lot longer than I've been a dev. Wow. Okay. And not to be creepy, I did look up your YouTube because I was like, oh, let me yeah. see what TypeScript stuff he has. And you were doing like Boston accents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So I've, this is really weird because like I've got this old YouTube channel, which is myself. And then I've got, um, uh, and then I've got a new YouTube channel, which is like TypeScript and stuff. And so I'm having to compete on SEO against myself. You know what I mean? So when yeah. people search Matt Pocock, I don't want them to see the accent stuff anymore. I want to see my new stuff. Come on. <laughs> So I'm love having to work against the algorithm here. Awesome. Love it. Um, I'm happy to. So so um, if people just joined in, I see B. Dougie in here. Hey, um, Matt just did a really awesome demo of how the TypeScript translator works and then just using um, it as well. If anyone has any questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll look through them really quickly. Um, but one question for you, um, Matt, how can mm. people contribute to the TypeScript translator? Great question. I wanted to make this as easy as possible. Um, when you hover over one of these errors, um, usually the feeling is like, OK, yeah, I'm getting my error. This is this is great. I'm getting my translation. Awesome. But for this one, this one actually doesn't have a translation in the system. So there's actually a button here where you can just press it and contribute a translation. Oh. So what this does is, yeah, it went to the right page, um, is it says, how do I contribute? And so it just takes you to the contributing document. Um, so this was, wasn't was written by me, actually. It was written by, uh, what was his name? Yasin Aldeeb, um, who's a, a lovely contributor to this repo. Oh, he's so good, man. Oh, man. <laughs> this is like the third time. <laughs> so somebody in the chat asked or, or said, um, I wish I could contribute more to open source. So if you really want to contribute to open source, a great place to start is looking up uh, good first issues. Typically, that's tagged on GitHub in open source project. And also open source is a great place to take a look at as well if you want to get started, started in open source projects. Perfect. I love that you shouted that out because after you said that, I was like, oh, we could shout out one <laughs> project right now that messed yeah. up in open source. It's, a, it's the one that I did my first contribution to. Um, and it's a really good project with a good supportive community. Yeah, absolutely. And somebody else asked, um, I guess, how to get started with TypeScript or learn more about TypeScript. Um, Udemy? Um, yeah. <laughs> maybe when Matt comes back, we can ask him um, what's the name of his course so you can take a look at that. Yeah, I think, yeah, I would say, I would say Udemy. Also, what has strangely been helping me with learning new languages has been github copilot if people have access to that that would be cool too mm -hmm. i didn't know python and i had to write something in it very quickly um and i used to copilot and i was like "Ooh, oh that's <laughs> awesome yeah. <laughs> I've, been yeah, trying, I I've been trying to get copilot to solve a leak code hard this week and <laughs> it's just been giving me wrong answers so oh, no. far. <laughs> 
you <laughs> do you want to suggest the su- like how we can show all suggestions? Oh, I should look. I should read the docs. Um, yeah, always read the docs, people. Don't be like me. <laughs> well, I just realized that when I talked to a product manager, he was like, you can "Oh, see <laughs> oh. hi, Matt. Sorry hey, about Matt. that. <laughs> Welcome back." I think I should be sorry, shouldn't I? I mean, or my <laughs> oh, it's broadband fine. provider should be sorry. <laughs> How far did we get? Because <laughs> I just like kept on talking, you know. Like, I just went into a stream of consciousness. I realized my like thing wasn't loading. Um, you were telling us how people can contribute to your project. Got you. That's right. Uh, but um, I what what conversations do, do you want to ask me? Because uh, let me just quickly set up my stuff again. Oh, people were asking how can people get started with learning TypeScript. Oh, great question. So, all right, let me let me show some stuff then. So, sorry, let me move your faces away. Um, so, let me share my screen. I'll show you some stuff. Uh, basically, the TypeScript docs are, like, extremely good. Um, I think people tend to, like, have a love-hate relationship with basically any doc site that they come up with. But the TypeScript handbook is, like, extremely good. So, it teaches you the basics. It even gives you kind of, like, onboarding from different, um, like, if you're coming from OOP or functional programming or you're, like, a brand new programmer then you, it gives you a history of JavaScript and gives you like all of this stuff to like onboard you, which is amazing. Um, so the handbook, I think, is the best place for it. Like if you're a brand new person learning TypeScript. If you, there's also some resources um, like Learning TypeScript from Adriff Goldberg, which is a really cool book that kind of just came out. And this is, I, I got the chance to read this actually like before it came out and it's real, real good guys. Like it's, it's pretty nice. And so if you want something that you can read through in a more kind of linear way and give you a sense of like what TypeScript is supposed to do, then this is pretty great. Um, other than that, uh, when my course comes out, then you can use that, which is totaltypescript.com. Um, but uh, I'm sort of focusing more on the more advanced use cases of TypeScript first. So, oh, and also I did a stream with, uh, with Kelvin. I can't remember his last name, sorry. Um, which is real, real good too. So if anyone in chat wants to wants to link that, I did like an hour long stream with him, I think on Monday. Um, so that was really, really nice for beginners. Love it. I also like that um, nod to the the book that Josh wrote because I remember him talking about and working on it. So I was really excited about that. I have one interesting question here. Um, Curry Kappa says, any plans to add localization and translate errors to other languages other than English for people like me who struggle a bit with English? That's a good Ooh, question. It's a great question. Totally. Yeah, there's like an open issue for it. And I think someone has made a PR for it. Um, it's totally possible. Um, it's just like an enormous amount of work, you know, because there's 19,000 errors to translate in English. Like, and then we got to go to a uh, thingy, thingy, thing. And it's something that I can't contribute to because, you know, being a typical kind of xenophobic Englishman, I only like know my own language, yeah. which is, uh, I know, which is lame. Um, my wife speaks like fluent German and I just like stumbling along in English. So, yeah, definitely. It's definitely on my to-do list. And um, there's also another one of the contributors called, um, called Eddie. He's like a collaborator on the project. And so he's been kind of thinking about that and working out a way to do it too. Awesome. It's awesome. I'm happy that it's on your to-do list. Uh, Rizelle, do you think that's something that Copilot could possibly help with in the future? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. That is like, maybe that is something that we should, like that GitHub should do, you know, like also translating it into other Right, that'd be pretty yeah, cool would be if we cool. could click a button and it's just like whatever language you want. Yeah, using Copilot. that's a great idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> someone said, "Well, you can translate in Scottish with audio, audio system system. With the accent." Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that would be fun doing audio snippets of each of the uh, TypeScript types and different accents. That would be <laughs> extremely cool. Awesome. Get Siri to do it. <laughs> And I also think that, I mean, as you as you and Eddie um, build out how you're going to do that translation, I think that's like a good opportunity for Curry Kappa and anybody else who who speaks um, other languages than English to, to go ahead and contribute to your project. Absolutely. Definitely. I think one thing I really like is um, is it's it's so hard to like to answer the uh, question that I wasn't asked about Copilot contributing. It's like so much of the project is about the human touch, you know, and actually explaining things in a way. And, and it's about teaching, you know, and it's like, and I, I, 
I would be sort of like worried about the quality because I wouldn't be able to oversee it in other languages. But if I can find someone who really gets the project and like um, knows what we're trying to aim for and is able to oversee that, then it sounds perfect. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. I guess we're done with the technical portion of this um, and we can transition to the, the non-technical questions I always ask. Um, cool. And if you want to do those, Kadesha, you can. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, Matt, tell us, what is your favorite food? Oh, I didn't think about this at all. <laughs> <sighs> didn't think about this at all. Um, all right. Uh, so I'll, I'll just say something that I've been making recently that I really, really like, um, which is this it's like a lentil dumpling stew basically and Ooh. it's so easy to make and it's like just carrots and celery and like lentils and good stuff and like um these dumplings and things and like you just cook it in there and it just goes like that and it's just so good and caramelized onions on the top as well it's like mm, it's really, really nice my wife is vegetarian so like uh, we eat a lot of sort of veggie food uh so i tend to cook a lot of veggie food too so that's that's the thing i'm kind of into making at the moment me that and sounds Kadesha. delicious. I was just going to say, as two vegetarians, that sounds uh, delicious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me send you the recipe, actually, because my, my wife used to work for a um, Tesco magazine or like a big food magazine in the UK. And so her friend is like a huge, um, it's like a recipe editor there. And she's like huge into that. So there's, there's the recipe for it right there. Ooh, thank you. Oh, wait, I think, I think Twitch puts it as um, any links. It, it blurs them out. So okay. we'll just get stars, <laughs> but <down. laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I'll send you to it in private chat. <laughs> Thank you. And one person asks, do we know the most errors that get logged by the TypeScript error translation? Yep. Translator, sorry. Uh, so no, we don't. It doesn't do any like uh, analytics or any um, any tracking whatsoever. Um, it. I, I'm really curious to know if TypeScript does have that sort of telemetry to know whether it does like track the errors that you could have, because I think that would be really cool. Because that would give you a sense of what errors you should focus on first, and what what are the biggest differences you can make. That would be that would be dope to have that mm -hmm. that data. Cool, cool, um, cool. And our last non -technical, technical question for you is: What is your favorite Beyonce song? So I don't listen to a lot of Beyonce. Like I know it's there, and I know it's like I <laughs> it's it's like in the culture. You know what I mean? But like I don't know. I'm just like so beyond beyonce you know what i mean like beyonce is so like come on man i think that's just so... sacrilegious <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just gonna cut my internet on myself this time. <laughs> so there are there are two albums that i really like by this artist called no name no name is so good Ooh, from Chicago. Like yeah no name is so good man and yeah. like that's that's yeah like it's it's just the um just the sort of jazzy feeling with like her weird voice on top of it and like the words she's saying and it just sounds great <laughs> nice <laughs> i like no name too b dougie said um hold up is hold his up. favorite song and That's i think um, yeah that is a good one i think the guest from last week said the same song so yeah and someone said oh, start nice. matt on hamilton i thought <laughs> Which, are you are you obsessed or something? I can do every word of Hamilton, every single word. Of Hamilton. Oh wow! I can do every word, like easily. I've tested myself. Um, yeah, I'd just, like Solange. That's exciting. Yeah, that's good. And have a small sample size of TypeScript errors to extrapolate on. That's an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well um this is a shorter stream today which i actually like i like when they're like in little bite-sized bits um so thanks everyone for joining in I, i'm really um happy that so many people wanted to learn about typescript yeah. um and that the, the chat was so lively do any of you have any like last question i mean last comments or things you want to promote i think i'm good other than you can sign up to my um uh, you know, my TypeScript workshop that's next Friday. Uh, and no, I'm good. I, I said I'm good, and then I proceeded to just promote myself. So. <laughs> no, promote it. Yes, yeah, sign I up for Matt. Do it, Matt. I'm, I'm literally like, I can feel the weekend coming. You know, it's like 5.30 p.m. here. It's like I've got two minutes left probably before I just like crack open a beer downstairs. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> All right, let me let you get to your to your weekend but yes y'all sign up for matt's um workshop see you next Bye. friday Bye.